Brother Greg Brooks Jr. and Brother Greg Brooks Sr., Brother Greg Holden, Sister Lucy Johnson, Brother Wilson Jones, Sister Hazen family, the Dupree family, Brother Willie Moore and family, Brother Junior Griffin, Mother Harvey, Sister Anderson and Baby Carter, Sister Linda Patterson, Sister Selma Sizer, Brother Kyrie Mosley, Sister Arlene Bradley and family, Sister Ermina Watkins, the Garrett family, Sister Doretha Richmond, Sister Betty Russell, Mr. and Mrs. Melvin and Bunny Hodge, Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Hughes, the Tucker family, the Turner family, the Williams family, Sister Felicia Smith, Marsh Marshall Brown and family, Brother Charles Herring, Brother Ricky Bradford, Sister Autumn Liddell and family, Sister Mary Dixon, Brother Carter Grit Gritson, Sister May Bradley and family, Sister Elta Jones, the Hines County School District students and personnel, Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Madge and Odell Neal and family, Sister Kenyatta Wilson and family, Sister Christina Wilson, Sister Lily Lacey, Sister Mary Berry, Brother Devin Watson, Evangelist Williams, um, the DeMar family, Brother Stanley Lamox, Sister Pearl Miles, De Brother Dale Anderson, Brother Brian Miller, and Brother Xavier McC McCrary. If we have any visitors, we would like to thank you for coming and to let you know that our services are every Sunday. Sunday school starts at 8.15, worship service is at 9.15, and Bible study is every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Thank you. My while I'm thinking about it right, uh, Leo Sorrell on our prayer list. That's my friend I was telling the church about last Sunday that had a, a stroke and uh, cancer. And uh, he's going through. And he desires our prayers. Also, Mother Mary, Mary Berry, uh, she was in ICU a few days ago, and uh, Sister Chapman is her caregiver, and I'm so grateful for that because Sister Chapman called me and let me know, and we had a chance to go see Mother Berry and pray with her, and she's doing better now. In fact, uh, they put in a room, right, Sister Chapman? They put in a room yesterday, but she's our member, y'all. Yeah. And she needs our prayers as well. God bless you.
certainly give honor to God who is my life. It is through him that we live, we move, and have our beings. Give honor to Jesus the Christ, who is and always will be the great head of the church. Give honor to the Holy Spirit, who is my comforter and my guide. Give honor to Elder Evans, Minister Williams, Minister Bradley, our other Minister Bradley, our motherboard, our very powerful deacon staff, to our usher, to each of you all of my father's children, and certainly give honor to my own family, especially my very lovely wife, whom I thank God for every single day of my life. There is a word from the Lord, church. And uh, if you brought your Bible, now we want to invite you to the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 1. St. Matthew, chapter 1. We begin reading at verse number 18. St. Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 <clears throat> through 21. When you find it, I'm certain you'll find these words recorded. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. We'd like to offer a subject taken from these passages and other supporting passages of Scripture. Jesus is the reason for the season. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Jesus is the reason for the season. You know, I, I, I actually love listening to Christmas music in the month of December. I, I just love Christmas music. And, and, and I know that it's exciting to see beautiful lights in every city and every town that you come through. I know it's fun to shop for family and friends. I, I know it's, it's great to have company coming into town to visit us during this time. And, and, and listen, I know it's priceless to see the faces of our little children when they light up on Christmas morning as they open their gifts. Yeah, everybody that know me know that Christmas is my favorite time of the year. It's so much fun to sit around the living room early Christmas morning with family opening gifts and laughing out loud. It just brings joy to the whole house. Uh, and, and all of those things are lovely and wonderful, even joyous. But I'm sent this morning to remind the world, saints and sinners, that none of those fun things mean anything unless you understand that Jesus is the reason for the season. It's all about him. It's not about us. And listen, I've learned to look forward to Christmas every year, not for gifts, not for the bright lights, but I look forward to celebrating Jesus' birthday. Yeah, that's what I look forward to doing. I, and then I want the world to know that I'm happy about Jesus being born. And yes, I do make a big deal about Christmas. His birthday, his birthday is more important than yours and mine. Yeah, I, I, I look at it like celebrating my best friend's birthday. And that means a lot to me. I don't know about you, but Jesus is my best friend. And I want to celebrate his birthday. Jesus is the reason for the season. 
And I think I ought to tell you, God also gets joy when we celebrate his son's birthday. The angels even rejoice in heaven. And, and you know what we ought to do? We should start sitting our children down weeks before Christmas and start telling them the Christmas story. Now, I'm not talking about telling them about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I'm not talking about telling them about Frosty the Snowman or, or the Charlie Brown Christmas. I'm not talking about telling them the story about how the Grinch stole Christmas. But I'm talking about telling them the story about the birth of Jesus Christ. That's the Christmas story. The way he was born and the reason he was born. That's a great story. And you ought to tell them this story every year. And this story should never become old to our ears. It ought to be exciting every time we hear about the birth of Jesus Christ. As for me, yeah, the story of the birth of Jesus gets sweeter and sweeter as the years go by. Well, why, Pastor? Why? Why? Because I understand the love that God has for this world and how he gave his only begotten son. He gave his son twice. Well, how did he give him twice? First of all, he gave his son to us to be born. See, see, Jesus was doing fine, in case you didn't know. Jesus had it made. Jesus was in heaven, sitting on the right hand of the Father. He was all right. We're the one that was a mess. And God gave him to be born for you and I. Yeah, the second time God gave his son was to die for our sins. What an awesome God we serve. Christmas <laughs> is all about love. Jesus is love. And that's what Christmas is all about. As we get ready to unpack our text this morning, uh, uh, when, when we look at the New Testament, uh, Matthew being the first of four gospel writers, we need to understand how precious the word of God really is. This word is precious, I tell you. It's very precious. The New Testament gave the world hope in Jesus Christ. The New Testament gave us hope in Jesus Christ. Well, well, we, we need to understand that, 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 that there was 400 years, good God Almighty, between the prophecy of Malachi and the advent or the coming of Christ. 400 years of silence but God was not sending prophets out to preach his word. So when the New Testament came on the scene, that gave us hope in Jesus Christ. People back then was waiting to hear from heaven. They was waiting to, to, to hear, hear from God. They was waiting for God to do what he promised he would do. God promised he would send the Messiah. So when we got the New Testament, we learned that the Messiah, had came. Good God Almighty. God's word is so precious. Things got so quiet back then, folks couldn't hear from heaven. They thought God had went AWOL. Definition of AWOL is absent without official leave, but not the intent. Good God Almighty to desert. He's absent without official leave. But he never intended to desert or leave his people. He was just quiet for 400 years. But when the New Testament came on the scene, glory be to God, our hope was renewed. And this Sunday, the first Sunday in December, is the beginning of what we call Advent season. In Christian communities around the world, Advent refers to a full week season of remembering and celebrating the arrival of Jesus Christ on earth. That's what it, that's what it means. And, and, and my sisters and my brothers, that's something to celebrate. Yeah, you celebrate a lot of things, I know, but when you celebrate the arrival of Jesus being born, coming to earth, that's something to celebrate. It's time. It's a time to reflect on the unexpected nature of Jesus' humble birth. He had a humble birth. And, and not only that, not only should we reflect on his birth, but we need to join in with the anticipation of when he will come again to reunite heaven with earth. We got something to look forward to. Yeah, church, we, 
We have so much joy to look forward to when Jesus returns and takes us home to glory. We, we have joy in knowing that we have a home already prepared for us, a home, a building not made by hands of man, but it's eternal in the heaven. So, so really the entire month of December, saints, I think I ought to tell you, we should be fasting and praying as much as we can, leading up to the day that Jesus was born. That ought to be on our mind, and when you fast about something, believe me, you got a purpose for, past, for fasting, and it ought to be on our mind. I'm looking forward to celebrating the day that Jesus was born, and we celebrate on December 25th. But up until that time, we ought to have that on our mind. Yes. God Almighty. Yeah, that's the day when God became one with mankind. Yes. I don't know about you, but that, that means so much to me. When God became one with mankind. Right. See, that was, that, that was a great separation before Jesus came. And when God gave the instructions to that he would be he would be called Emmanuel, Emmanuel means God with us. God was letting us know, my son is coming so that I can be with man forever. And man would have a right to the tree of life. All because of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the reason for the season. As we study these verses, these few verses, 18 through 21, God went completely out of his way to stir up the world. Nothing was, was normal about the birth of Jesus Christ. God caused major conflict and disturbance in the life of two innocent people that he used to be the mother and the father of his son. God caused some confusion between those people. But God knows what he's doing. We don't understand what he does, but God knows what he's doing. We just have to accept everything that God does in our life. God brought some attention to the birth of his son, Jesus Christ. When we look at verse number 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. In other words, it happened like this. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. This means that while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, when the, when the time came for Jesus to be born or presented to earth, God wanted to get the attention of the whole wide world, and he did just that. The shepherds were even telling the story on the mountaintop. They were telling it everywhere they went. Everything that Isaiah Jeremiah, uh, Malachi, everything that, that these prophets talked about, and, and other prophets, everything that they talked about concerning the birth of Jesus Christ was finally about to come to pass. And God was excited about sending his son. Yeah, God planned every single action that took place. Nothing just happened by chance. Everything we read and study in this Bible about the birth of Jesus, it happened the way God intended for it to happen. Yeah, from the birth of John the Baptist, being the forerunner of Jesus Christ, until the time Jesus was born in a stable, it happened like God planned it to happen. And you know, God does things that don't make sense to mankind, but it makes perfect sense to God. And that's all that matters, that God is in control. And when you consider the pregnancy of Mary, the, the, the idea of Mary being an unwed mother, who back in that day would have ever believed that story? You, you, you wouldn't believe it now, and it'd be hard to believe back then that somebody was pregnant and, and a man, a lady was pregnant and a man was not involved. But with God, all things are possible. She was required, Mary was required to be willing to give her life to God, regardless of the embarrassment and the opinion of family, friends, and nosy neighbors. You know you got nosy neighbors now. You had them back then. They, they already talking about how she got pregnant. Don't believe that what she's saying. You got, you got nosy neighbors that, that stick their nose and stuff that ain't none of their business. But, but, but Mary was required to, to go through with the plan that God laid out for her. 
regardless to what anybody thought about her. Yeah, that was so hard for Mary, though. But the angel Gabriel was sent by God to explain every single detail to her. She was so happy when she got the explanation. She was happy, she was humbled to be used by God for such a great honor yes. to be the earthly mother of the son of the living God. Amen. What an honor that is. Glory. Just think about it, mothers. I know y'all got some good boys. I know y'all got some good children. Yes, sir. But if you could have had the chance to be the mother of Jesus Christ, the savior of the world, wouldn't that be a great honor? My Lord, well, Mary was so excited about it. And when you study the gospel of Matthew, Matthew tells us how the angel informed Joseph about the birth of Jesus. And Joseph was a just man. He was an obedient man. But then when you look at the gospel according to St. Luke, Luke teaches us and tells us how the angel uh, Gabriel informed Mary of her pregnancy and how the birth of Jesus would take place. So the gospel writers, we need to study them all because they all have, have, have different things to tell us, but it's all the truth. And that's what the gospel is. It's the truth. Amen. Now notice verse number 19. It says, then, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, he was minded, he had a mind to put her away privately. But he was a just man. Remember that now. He felt like we all been hurt enough. Mm -hmm. This this thing has caused enough pain in my family. And, and Mary, I don't want to. I don't want to do nothing to hurt you no more. Because when 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 things happen in your family, it just don't affect you. It affects the whole family, both families, yeah, yeah. the children. It affects everybody. So 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 I, I tell you, I tell you, church. God knew what He was doing when He picked Joseph to be the earthly father. Joseph was a good man. Yeah, and with all that major shame, with all that embarrassment caused to Joseph, you know, his partners, his partners had to, he probably had some partners like some of us got. Some partners, when they found out Mary was pregnant, some of the partners began to say, uh, man, you know she cheated on you, don't you? You say she's pregnant, you know she cheated on you. Some of the some other partners would, 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 tell, would tell Joseph, had a nerve to tell him, ain't no sense in going home. Jody got your girl and gone. So some of the partners would talk all that crazy stuff to him. Put it on his mind. But Joseph was a true gentleman. Yeah, even though he was shocked by what appeared to be the broken trust by Mary. And his personal embarrassment was more than he can bear. Even though those things were true, he was still not going to cause Mary no shame publicly. He just wasn't going to do it. He didn't care what nobody else said to him. He respected and loved Mary. He loved her so much. When you look at verse number 20, it says to him, the, the, now, 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 now when you look at that verse, I want to tell you, the man really didn't know what to do. He was in a, he was in a tough spot. He didn't know what to do. His spirit was troubled and God knew it. See, when we're going through something and our spirit gets really troubled and we don't know what to do, God already knows about it. But what you got to do is you got to learn how to talk to God about it. Church, I found out something. I found out that there are times in all of our lives when we're going to come face to face with some of the most shameful and embarrassing things. We're going to find ourselves just like Joseph. Just sitting there with our head in our hands. Not knowing what to do or how to handle that situation. We all if you haven't been there, just keep living. You're going you to come face to face with something that's embarrassing. If, if it didn't happen to you, it happened to somebody in your family, and you ain't going to know how to deal with it. But we can learn a lot from Joseph today. Yeah, I, I, I want to I wanna tell you, I want to tell you, when you come face with great embarrassment to you or your family, don't do anything drastic or too fast. Don't, don't make no quick decisions. Do like Joseph did. Think about it and pray about it. Why? Because we serve a great God. We serve a God that has the answers to everything. No matter what kind of problem you're going through, it ain't nothing new to God. He'll tell you, I, Lisa, I can deal with that. And you think it's
is something that, 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 that you can't, you ain't got nobody you can talk to. But when you tell Jesus about it, yes. he'll tell you, I can fix it for you. <laughs> I know he's able to fix it. Somebody said if Jesus can't fix it, nobody can. But I want to change it a little bit. I want to tell you Jesus can fix it. Yeah, he can. All you got to do is wait on him. And he will direct your path. Lean not to your own understanding. When we look at verse number 20, it says, But while he thought on these things, Joseph was sitting there thinking. It said, While he thought on these things, Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, God knows each of us by name, church. He will call our name when he wants to get our attention. You'll be looking like you know somebody called you. God will call our name sometime. He said, Joseph, thy son of David, fear not to take unto Mary thy wife, for that thing which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost not from no other man like you might be thinking. God gave him that reassurance. She ain't touched no other man like that. It's from the Holy Ghost. In this scripture, y'all, Joseph was faced with the predicament of his life. This man had a tough, tough predicament that he was in. Joseph was literally torn between obeying the law which was, the law said that you're supposed to expose your wife to the authorities. Mm -hmm. Meaning that they, they could have stoned her to death. Yeah. And Joseph was torn between this thing. It bothered him a lot. He didn't know what to do. He said, Joseph, 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 Joseph was a man, a man of principle. Yeah. He lived by principle. Mm -hmm. And when he found out his wife was pregnant, his, his, his fiance was pregnant and it wasn't by him. He knew. He felt like he knew. That she had to have messed up. So he was thinking about, I, 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 I'm supposed to turn her in to the authorities. But on the other hand, he had so much love for Mary. He was between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, this young Christian man struggled. He was perplexed. He was troubled. And he was disappointed. Like any man would be if he was faced with that situation. His imagination began to run away with him. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you know what I mean. When you when you call, you got these cell phones now, and, and cell phones have caused so many problems in marriages uh, and in relationships. Because now, back, back in the day, if you needed somebody, if your friend or somebody didn't know how to go find it, you just couldn't get to them until they got back home. But now you got these cell phones. And your significant other expect you to answer that phone on the first ring. Second, maybe. But when, when they call you, and you don't answer that phone, and it rang two times, you don't answer. You're going to have a problem, brother. Sister, you're going to have a problem. And don't let it ring twice, and then all of a sudden, it kind of go dead. They say, I know he saw it. I know she saw it. She just... Turned it off. Imagination began to run wild with you. All of a sudden, now, 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 you, you, you in there now? You, 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 you going in the closet, throwing clothes out to the street? You, 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 you going out there getting you some lighter fluid? You finna set the car on fire? You, you going in there? And all of a sudden, it's nighttime, and, and all of a sudden, you bought us some hot grits. Your imagination then ran wild with you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's what Joseph was going through. Joseph was going through these things because he just felt like something can't be right. But can I tell you, you don't, you shouldn't always think the worst when folks don't call you right then and ask the phone. Joseph felt deceived. He was experiencing jealousy. He was experiencing rage. He didn't know what to do. He felt like Mary had committed boredom against him. And everybody in town knew about it. That's something that make you mad when everybody, everybody know what's going on. And you the last one to find out. And that's what Joseph was thinking was going on. He felt like he was going to be the laughing stock of town. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yet he loved Mary. And he loved her deep down in his heart. He didn't want Mary to be hurt. He wanted to divorce her quietly and secretly. Yeah, and I think that's how all divorces ought to be. 
If you got to go through a divorce, I, 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 I don't believe you ought to make a scene about it. All marriages don't work out. And I know this personally. All of them don't work out. But, but I tell you what else I know. There ought to be, <laughs> there ought to be a way that you can divorce somebody respectfully. Respectfully. Especially if you got children together. It ain't no sense in having no having no no mass confusion out there. And, and you go through a divorce and, and y'all can't even talk to one another. It ain't just about y'all. You got some children, you got some family involved. You ought to be able to do things respectfully. And that's what Joseph had on his mind. But listen, love covers a multitude of sin. A person who truly loves cannot be critical, judgmental, and a person that really loves you ain't going to be airing your dirty laundry out there. Right. Joseph, Joseph just couldn't do it. He just couldn't do it. Joseph said, I, I just can't do Mary like that. I can't do it like that. He, he was just going to let it go quietly and respectfully. And church, when you're dealing with similar situations, don't, don't go talking to everybody about your situation. Don't be out there gossiping about it. And, and don't criticize. Yeah, just get somewhere along with God and pray about the problem. And then when you pray about the problem, whatever God tells you to do, that's what you ought to do. That's what you ought to do. Don't go telling somebody, God told me to do this. What you think? It don't matter what they think. When God has told you what to do, that's what you need to do. No matter, no matter if you agree with it or not, if you go to God for an answer, you need to be ready to accept his answer. Believe me, he will speak to a sincere heart. And his instructions will be clear. You're going to know what God wants you to do. But can I tell you, it's always better to delay your decision and be sure than to rush your decision and be sorry. It's always better to delay your decision and be sure than to rush your decision and be sorry. Joseph was blessed because he waited on the Lord. When the angel called Joseph, when, he, when the angel said, son of David, Joseph, son of David, Joseph was shocked. Even though he was in a dream, he was shocked to hear the angel call him the son of David. He was awakened to a glorious calling. He, 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 went, he actually went from sad to glad. He went from sorrow to joy. He was chosen by God as, the, as a son of David to be the earthly father to the son of David, the Messiah of the world. That was a blessing. Now, just think of the blessings Joseph would have missed out on if he didn't wait on God, if he'd have acted too fast, if he'd have made the decision on his own and didn't wait on God, he would have missed out on being the earthly father of Jesus Christ. My Lord, my Lord. Some people miss out on their blessings all the time because they didn't stay when God told them to stay. Or they didn't leave when God told them to go. And God might tell you either one. I don't know. That's between you and God. But all I know is whatever he tell you to do, you better do it. Or else you're not going to be blessed. Obedience is better than sacrifice. This verse meant so much to Joseph because all the Jews knew the prophecies that said the Messiah was to be from the line of David. Joseph knew that. Joseph knew that that's what had been prophesied, that Jesus, was the Messiah, was going to come through the line of, of David. And when the angel called him the son of David, man, Joseph got excited. Wow. And he quickly got Joseph's attention and alerted Joseph to the seriousness of this great assignment. This was a great assignment. And I think I ought to take any assignment that God gives us is a great assignment. Any assignment, whatever he tells you to do, that's a great assignment. But this was a divine calling to a humble carpenter. Joseph wasn't nothing but a carpenter. Man built houses. He wasn't famous around town. But I tell you what, 
he was about to become the earthly father to the son of God. That was going to make him famous. And church, if you stay humble, God will exalt you to a level that nobody would ever imagine you could reach. There's some folks in here right now. Y'all have experienced things that people could not believe God bless you like he did. From your hometown, folks looked at you like a, a nobody. But God blessed you so much and moved you up and promoted you in life until you can't believe the blessing you'll see. Joseph was nothing but a carpenter. And God fished so he would become the earthly father mm -hmm. to his son. Amen. Ain't the Lord all right? Yes, mm -hmm. I'm a living testimony. Yes, God has done things in my life. Yes, he has brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Yes, a little old boy that didn't know if I was country or city. Daddy would take me to the country to feed hogs. I'd come back to school and go to the public school. I was confused about who I was. But God had a plan for my life. A boy that didn't even have a college degree. And God put me in positions where people had to have master's degrees. God can do things in your life that nobody else could ever thought he could do in your life. God can open doors that no man can shut. But if you don't do what he tell you you can do, he can shut doors that no man can open. As I come to a close, all I'm trying to tell you is there's a right way and a wrong way to confront traumatic experiences and situations. Joseph demonstrated the right way to handle problems like that. He got off alone by himself and he considered the situation. He prayed unto God but, but being a just and godly man he got off alone with nobody but God. He didn't bring his partner to the conversation. He just wanted to talk to God about it. Listen children there are some situations that you're going to come face with when the only person you need to seek counsel from is God. But just remember what I told you. When he gives you the answer, you must obey him. Don't worry about what your nosy neighbor's going to say. Don't worry about what your family or friend's going to say. When God orders your steps, you better walk in the direction he tells you to walk. Joseph probably was crying like a little baby. Joseph was probably pouring his heart out to God. And that's all right to do. When you face with a hard problem, with a, with a tough situation, it's all right to cry. Cry to the Lord. But can I tell you, God has a way of wiping the tears from our eyes. He has a way of giving us peace in the midst of confusion. Has anybody here found out that, 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 that you can go to God in secret prayer? And you can leave all of your burdens there. And have you found out that, that you can tell God anything and, and he won't put your business in the street? Oh, I'm glad I can talk to the Lord about whatever it is I'm going through. And just so y'all know, things that I might be ashamed to talk to y'all about, I can talk to God about. I can talk to God about. The man loves me. And he loves you. And he ain't gonna pass judgment on you because he understands what you're going through. When you look at Psalms 91 and 15, the word says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in time of trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. Then I look at Isaiah 65 and 24. It says, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Anybody experience that? When you call it on the Lord, before you can get through prayer, he didn't answer your prayer. I know the Lord is all right. He'll do that for you. Verse 21, the last verse says, and the angel, the angel began, y'all, to explain the mission of Joseph, the mission of Mary, and the mission of Jesus. The angel said, and she, meaning Mary, shall bring forth a son, and thou, meaning Joseph, shall call his name Jesus, 
and he, meaning Jesus, shall save his people from their sin. Yeah. Ain't the Lord all yeah. right. Yeah. This verse explains the meaning of Christmas. And church, uh, it's time to acknowledge the real reason for the season. His name uh, is Jesus. Uh, I wonder, do you know him? Hmm. His name uh, is not uh, Saint Nick. Uh, his name uh, is not Chris Pringle. Uh, his name uh, is not Santa Claus. Uh, but his name uh, is Jesus Christ. Uh, God uh, chose his name uh, and gave instructions to Joseph uh, to call him Jesus. Uh, he, uh, he's Jesus uh, in the morning. Uh, he's Jesus uh, in the noonday hour. Uh, he's still Jesus uh, in a midnight hour. Uh, and God uh, gave Jesus a mission. Uh, his mission is uh, to save his people uh, from their sin. Uh, and I want you to look at the scripture now. Uh, it said uh, to save his people uh, from his sin. Uh, they let me know uh, that everybody uh, is not his people. Uh, and he all right. Uh, you see, Satan got some folks uh, following him. Uh, but Jesus came uh, to save his people. Uh, and I'm glad uh, I belong to the Lord. Uh, anybody is glad uh, that you belong to Jesus. Uh, his purpose uh, for being born uh, on Christmas Day uh, is to teach us uh, how to love one another. Uh, his purpose uh, for being born uh, is to teach us uh, how to forgive one another. Uh, and he all right. Uh, his purpose uh, for being born uh, is to bridge the gap uh, between God and man uh, so our souls uh, will not be lost. Uh, I don't know about you boys, but I'm so glad uh, Jesus was born uh, on Christmas morning. Uh, he is uh, the real uh, for the season. I wonder, do you know him this morning? I, I'm talking about Jesus, uh, the new boy king. Uh, Mary's uh, baby boy, uh, the son of David. Uh, the stone uh, that hewed out the mountain. Uh, that meek uh, and humble lamb. Uh, anybody here know him? Uh, the one uh, that came uh, to set the captive free. Uh, the one uh, that died for you and me. Uh, Jesus is uh, the reason for the season. Uh, I'm so excited uh, to celebrate uh, the Savior's birth. Uh, he's worthy to be praised. Uh, anybody going to praise him this morning? Uh, he was uh, sitting on the right hand. Uh, and he said to God, uh, prepare me a body. Uh, and I'll go down uh, and redeem man. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, I'm talking about Jesus. Uh, anybody? He'll know him, uh, Jesus. Uh, oh, I love to call his name. Uh, anybody he'll know him. Uh, I'm talking about Jesus. Uh, the more I call him, uh, the better I feel. Uh, ain't he alright? Uh, every now and then, uh, I have to steal away somewhere uh, and go down uh, on my bended knees. Uh, every now and then, uh, I feel like I ain't got a friend in the world. Uh, but when I call on Jesus, he always come to my rescue. Uh, I found out uh, he is a mighty good company keeper. Uh, he's bread uh, in a starving land. Uh, he's water in dry places. Uh, he's my all in all. Uh, anybody here know him this morning? Uh, he died uh, for you and I. But early the third day morning, uh, he got up with all power in his hand. And if you don't know him today, I recommend Jesus to you. I want you to get to know the man. The doors of the church is open. Will there be one? Might not know the Lord in the part of your sins. Time is winding up, I tell you. You ought to give your life to Jesus. He gave his life for you. He's a wonderful child, I tell you. He is a wonderful, wonderful child. He died.
Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we come now just to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for your holding your divine word. Lord, we thank you for opening our eyes and reminding us that Jesus is the reason for the season. Lord, we love you so much, dear God. And Lord, we ask you now that you would just go with us and stand by us. During this holiday season, dear God, I'm praying that you would have mercy now upon the less fortunate ones. The ones that still don't have a place to call home. The ones, dear God, when our children are excited and open up presents on Christmas morning, have mercy upon the ones that don't even have a bag of candy. Have mercy, dear God. Help us to understand that we are blessed among hundreds of thousands. We bless you, God. Lord, help us to tell the world that Jesus is the reason for the season. As we get ready to leave this place, but never your presence, we ask you for traveling grace. Help us to make it back home to our destination safe and sound. Lord, we love you so much. We do lift you up. We will forever magnify your holy name. Now may the grace of God the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all now, henceforth, and forever. All that agree said, Amen. 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 God bless you. We love you. Go in peace.